Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is Layla and I'm so happy you could join us. But before we get into the Word, we're going to take a moment and pray. Lord, we thank you for today and we thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for all the good things that you've blessed us with, Lord. Good health, good finances, good relationships, good jobs, Lord. Good everything because you are good, Lord. We thank you for helping us, Lord, and providing a way for us to be your sons and daughters and be a part of your family, Lord. We ask that you'll continue to minister to us, Lord, that you continue to help us because you've already said that you would, Lord, and you have been doing it, Lord. So we thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In amen. Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. So glad to have you with us and to get into the word and study out what the Lord has for us concerning our role and his plan in this time and this season of restoration. So thank you for joining us. And for all the listeners, we Mm -hmm. are in Zechariah chapter Mm 1, and we're continuing our discussion on the first of the eight visions that the Lord gave to Zechariah, covering verses 7 through 17. So whether you're joining us for the first time or rejoining us, I just want to encourage you to pause the episode and take a moment to read through that section of Scripture making it easier to follow along in the discussion. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. And now the floor is open to give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and ask any questions that you have. So who'd like to begin? I would. All right, Layla. So I want to start by reading verses 14 through 15, which says, So the angel who spoke with me said to me, Proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal. I am exceedingly angry with the nations at ease, for I was a little angry and they helped, but with evil intent. Mm -hmm. Um, Something interesting, and we've learned, you know, throughout our our morning Bible studies, that zealous, you know, or, or desire that he is... He wants Jerusalem and Zion, and as you said, Mommy, it's not about the buildings themselves because, I mean, we use mortar as well today and maybe mm-hmm. some, some better building materials like cement. So if it was really about the, um, the materials, then we've got the, we got the upper hand. We've got the, the better thing here. But it was really about the people's hearts, and it's always been about the people's hearts. What did he say in Jeremiah? He was talking about the heart. He said the heart is desperately wicked above all else and is constantly thinking of evil he didn't say that the the building was constantly wicked and thinking only of evil he said the heart so it's always been about our hearts towards the lord because that's out of out of you know the treasure in your heart flow the issues of life so out of out of your spirit man is what comes out of your mouth and dictates what kind of um actions you show and display outwardly and so for this particular section, the Lord was the, you know, God, the father, the, the whole Trinity at this po- point, because they're three in one. They're all the same. Um, all God, I should say, say it like that. They were desiring the people's hearts. And he was he was displeased with the way that the children of Israel were behaving, just like he's displeased when we sin. And the nations at ease, that particular section there, it wasn't the fact that they were quiet. The Lord isn't displeased with us being at at rest or at peace, but what they were doing at the time was uncalled for. So they were out of time and out of season with him, and that's where the you know the sin came in, and that's what he was displeased with. And then when he says in the you know the second half of fifteen, uh, talking about the nations, and they help, but with evil intent. I like seeing those sorts of things in the Bible because it really shows and captures the fact that nothing slips by God. He's not sleeping in a corner somewhere, so there's not a time where you think you can get one by on him, Mm -hmm. pull the wool over his eyes because, well, his eyes are everywhere. As Mm -hmm. was mentioned in the previous episode that we did, and depending on what description that you see, the 
or you read about in the Bible and the translation that you have, some of them describe the Holy Spirit as just being eyes, full of eyes within and without. I mean, it's sli slightly creepy, but not really. Um, and this goes to something we learn in, in Hebrew. This comes from chapter 4, verses 12 through 13, which says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature absolutely no creature hidden from his sight but all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account open suppose no mm -hmm. so he saw what the nations were doing and it's it's kind of an interesting thing to see though because if you read in jeremiah when i was talking about the king of babylon and nebuchadnezzar the lord referred to him as his son and it was the sword of babylon that was what the lord was using to bring the children of israel back to repentance but then go and look in like Daniel and you see the Lord speaking with Nebuchadnezzar and how he wasn't pleased at all with him. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that he mentioned it here and called it evil intent, which is, again, like I said, there's no time where we can deceive the Lord. He knows. He knew that, you know, the 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 king of uh, Nebuchadnezzar was coming for his own gain. He, the Lord was still able to use that to bring about what he wanted. It didn't have to be in that way. So that's really what I'm getting at. Just because the Lord is bringing something about doesn't mean you have to be on the wrong side of it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have to be an enemy that the Lord is just using, you know, because that's all the opportunity you'll give him to move and do what he wants to do on the earth. Mm -hmm. like, just like the children of Israel, they didn't have to go into captivity, like you said, mommy, and perish by famine in the soil. They could have gone peacefully. Mm -hmm. Daniel was like uh, almost like a Joseph mo moment, second in the kingdom. He Daniel was over all the satraps and governors and magistrates and everybody else. Highly promoted and positioned, absolutely. Right, but he quote unquote went into captivity. Well, he was free to do whatever he wanted to do. Just like Joseph, he was sold as a slave to Egypt and, you know, uh, Potiphar's wife lied on him and we saw how that happened but then Joseph was second in the kingdom and when Pharaoh was talking to him he said only in the matter of the throne am I better than you but everybody else that include the crown princes mm -hmm. were under his under Joseph's rule and dominion and whatever Joseph said happened so that goes to the heart of what you and the Charles and promise were talking about in the previous episode the Lord is always looking to promote us but he can't promote us if we aren't ready if we aren't faithful and aren't capable of doing the work in the way that it has to be done there was a reason that aaron didn't bring the children of israel out of egypt it was moses because moses was going to follow the lord and obey and do what was needed for the time aaron he made the golden calf come on man mm -hmm. uh, but as all sin aside he didn't have the mental fortitude that Moses had the go get him attitude that Moses had that would have allowed them to be brought out of Egypt with any success. I'm pretty sure Aaron, I mean, even myself, I would have wilted on that dust row. And I'm like, Lord, this is too much. You know what? Pharaoh wear those chains that put them back on my wrist. Let's, let's carry on as we were doing. So the Lord always picks the right person for the right job at the right time. And that's something that we have to understand. We want to be able to do the great works, to do the signs and the wonders and the miracles, to be prophets like Zechariah and Haggai and Berechiah and Ido and people like that. But we aren't willing to do the work or get to a place where the Lord can use us in that way. We want to insert ourselves where we don't belong. But when it's time for us to do our job, we are reluctant and we, you know, shy away from it. I give you another example of how you treat us like uh, the boys and I when we do chores. Each of us has a specific task and role to do. Sure, we can all wash the dishes. We can all vacuum the floor and we can all take out the trash. I mean, we're young and we have some muscle. And at the same time, you distinguish the boys go and take out the trash because that's within their respective role. I cook dinner. I wash dishes so on and so forth but it isn't to say that we can't do the other task when necessary but god mm. has a perfect place for each and every one of us to make that seam line mama your hand is raised mm -hmm. so i just wanted to say sir there are some things that the lord has assigned like as he's written about you in that book of your life in heaven that book that he's written he's written specific tasks that he's assigned to you and no one else can take that task like 
um, for example, Isaac was going to be the son of promise, no matter what. It didn't matter how many kids Abraham had before or after. It was not going to change. No one could have assumed the role of Isaac. Israel, the group, the people serving as the firstborn, um, the example of the firstborn among many brethren. That could not have been absorbed by another people, but it didn't mean that God didn't love the other people. He just had a specific role for them. And you cannot, no matter what you do, how many push-ups, how many Bible verses, how many, how much piety, whatever you live in, you can never replace them because this is a role that God has assigned to them. You are assigned as my second oldest daughter. That's your role. No one else can ever assume, assume that. They can change their name to Layla. They can style their hair like yours. They can try to wear glasses. They can try to do anything else that makes them feel like they should be a replacement, but they cannot be said replacement because that role is assigned to you. It's been assigned by God. So for each of us, the Lord has written good works for us to walk in. It's a part of our destiny plan. So it didn't matter. Um, Aaron could have been very faithful. He could have been not faithful at all. He was not going to be able to take Moses's place because God selected him for that. And because he selected him, he also equipped him for that. Aaron was selected and equipped for what he was supposed to do. And the Lord knew Aaron's struggles. And yet he still let him be in that high place. It wasn't because, oh, I'm gonna throw you a bone. You're Moses's brother. So I'm gonna let you do this. That's not why the Lord allowed him to be the high priest, the first high priest. Yes, or, that's not why he got that role. It wasn't because Moses was awesome and he was given throwing some nepotism his way so Aaron wouldn't feel left out. No, God called him for that. And he equip equipped him for that and gave him enough grace to take him through those moments where he was going to go make a golden calf and listen to the people and then still be able to restore him. So it's not a comparison between the two to try to compete for a particular role because it wasn't on the, even on the table for Aaron, it wasn't an option for him. So it wasn't an option because of the destiny track because as you God, brought up. Right? Exactly. They're appointed in the perfect will of the Lord, his covenant, mm -hmm. the things that the Lord has appointed are appointed for whom he's appointed them for. And mm -hmm. in his will, his perfect will, includes his perfect timing. So mm -hmm. I, I want to bring that up because it's important, right? Amen. We have here, the, uh, you could say, the fulfillment or the beginning of a fulfillment of a prophecy, right? And in this first vision that the Lord has given Zechariah, a dream or vision, right? Cause, mm -hmm. And I say yes. either or, right? Because mm -hmm. we, we view it as a, as a vision, but it says it happened at night, so... We won't discount that, right? <clears throat> now, it goes back to Jeremiah, right? Uh, in chapter 25, uh, really it's the first, I'll say 14 verses, but we'll just look at 12 through 14. It says, uh, it went, Then it will come to pass, when 70 years are completed, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, for their iniquity, says the Lord. And I will make it a perpetual desolation. So I will bring on that land all my words, which I have pronounced against it, all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied concerning all the nations. And then verse 14 says, For many nations and great kings shall be served by them also, and I will repay them according to their deeds and according to the works of their hands. So I bring that up because it's important. And the Lord communicates to us on so many different levels. This is part of the manifold wisdom of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Who did he give the dream, the vision, and or dreams to? People he well, could this trust. One, Zechariah. Okay. These, this Zechariah, particular. whose book, well, it's the Lord's book, obviously, mm -hmm. but he gave it to Zechariah, mm -hmm. the son of? Berechiah. Berechiah, Berechiah, right? Mm -hmm. The son of? Ido the prophet. Or Ido. Or Ido, okay. Mm -hmm. Names are important. They carry great weight, significance, and meaning. Okay. So, anybody know what Zechariah uh, I yes. name means what's that Yahweh remembers or Yahweh has remembered okay so mm -hmm. what about Berakia or Berakia sorry my Bible's not that awesome so <laughs> <laughs> so it's a his name means Yahweh blesses okay what does Edo mean anybody know no mm -mm. <laughs> timely or lovely ooh so the Lord if you put it all together, it means what? 
a lovely blessing that's on time because he's remembered his promise. The Lord remembers his blessing at the appropriate time. And clearly is lovely, right? So let's understand this. Because remember what the whole point and purpose of all these dreams and visions were for, right? Mm -hmm. Was to what? Encourage the people. So just in who the Lord chose to send, right? And yes. and the lineage, the heritage, right? There's a message. And it should be a reminder. All the way, going all the way back to Moses, right? I'd say beyond, but you can look at Deuteronomy 28. Now, this is the first, uh, I think it's 14 verses. But let's just look at verse 8. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all which you set your hands. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. So that's just one verse. But if you look at the 14 verses, those are all blessings of what? Obedience. 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 Mm -hmm. What did they just do? They just... There was a call to repentance. In Zechariah. In Zechariah, right. Themselves <clears throat> yes. For perfect obedience. Okay. Complete, so and that's what I mean by that, complete obedience. To actually go forward and do, accomplish, fulfill the word of the Lord, right? Which was, and the command of the Lord, which was to go and rebuild the Lord's house. Not focusing on their own stuff, but focusing on the call or what the Lord has for each one on the destiny track he has for each one's life, right? Mm -hmm. So, and also if you will, the Lord's remind them, hey, I've already commanded this blessing, right? So this was to encourage the people to move forward in what the Lord had commanded them, saying, and it was just, uh, if you will, the Lord reminding them or reassuring them, hey, I've already spoken. This is already the word that the Lord gave them about what he would do when they were obedient. So it's to help prompt them forward in the things that the Lord has desired to accomplish, mm -hmm. which is extremely important because, yeah, they were getting to the work, but what's the mentality, right? What is their heart first towards the Lord, but then to his work? And what's their urgency? Exactly. Because there's a, a time window that's associated with this. And the Lord is, I'll say he's famous for, he loves to align the times and purposes. And not that he's doing it. It's not like a backhanded thing. It's, this is how he operates. He, uh, he synchronizes things. He knew the time that the, the king that was going to be favorable, for, favorable towards them was coming into place. He knew the time that the gold was going to be just quarried out of the, <laughs> you know, the, the mine that it came from. And now it's going to be available to pass on to them. He knew the time that the cattle were going to be giving birth and come to the fullness that they were ready mm -hmm. to be offered or, you know, like they could be offered and selected. He knew when the wood was going to mature. He knew all of those things when the people were going to be at their best strength. He knew and the divine time and season that he already put in place and so he's prompting them so that they can get in line with that and be on track with that and i would say the name arrangement and alignment is more of a confirmation Absolutely. than it is an instructional message it's right. a confirmation it's, it's a reminder that, it's an assurance look i've already said these things right so just another way that the lord's communicating with them mm -hmm. but also how it applies to us today right we whether it's this nation or what, I mean, all the nations around the world, this is the same call the Lord has for everyone. And it's the same season. It's a time and a period of restoration. Well, what's the Lord done? He's called his people back to be his sons and daughters, right? Yes. Now, this is, if you will, the Old or Older Testament, right? Mm -hmm. When we're talking about Zechariah. But in Ephesians okay, 1, 6, it says that, uh, 5 and 6, He's predestined us for adoption as his sons through Christ, according to what? The good pleasure of his will. Who gave the covenant? Oh, the Lord did, according to wait, his will. His will is his plan, is his purpose, is his covenant. Right? And then yes. according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the beloved one, in Christ. Right? Mm-hmm. And isn't that exactly who comes riding to Zechariah? To the angel of the Lord. Well, at this time, the Lord's name had not been given. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So you see throughout whether it was even Joshua, right? Mm-hmm. The, the angel of the Lord, he's right? He's on the side of the, the Father. <laughs> he's on the side of the will of the Lord, <laughs> exactly. not the people. Mm. Exactly. So this applies to us today. But it also, understand, it requires our obedience. We intend to inherit, to receive, right? The blessing in full. Mm-hmm. It requires our obedience to the Lord. So if we are not experiencing the blessing, is it because we've been disobedient? Highly probably. Yes. And we should turn from disobedience and follow the Lord's instruction. Just be obedient to how he is leading us in the destiny track for each one of us, for you, for your life, me, for my life, and everyone else for their own life individually. And when, and when we are doing that, we will absolutely all receive mm-hmm. the blessings. Mm-hmm. And just real quick before we go, there are some of you, some of us who have been obedient. It's not Amen. a matter of... We've been disobedient and now we're trying to get obedient. We've been obedient and God sees that. He knows that he hears and he remembers that. Don't think that he's forgotten you and don't shy away from your stance and your place that, yes, I have obeyed the Lord, especially as he's borne witness in your spirit that that's the truth. So really what he's saying is now is the time that the train is moving. You may have been sitting in the dirt. You may have been waiting. You may have been like, Lord, I've done all that I can do. I've done everything you told me to do at this point, but it feels like we're at a standstill. That's the Patience of the That's right. And now God is saying, okay, get up. It's time to go. The train is getting ready to take off and move. Yes, you may have been here early to get on the train and the rest of the passengers may have had to be rounded up so they can get on the train. But don't get weary. Don't give up. Now it's time for the the train to move. Get up and get in position. Get up and get ready. Get your bags in your hand. Take those steps and walk and get on that train because you have been obedient and God has not forgotten that. Amen. And he's a rewarder. Amen. Of those that diligently seek him and that also are obedient. Amen. He's not forgotten his mercy or his love for you. Amen. All right. There's a lot in there. So we're going to pause there for today. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we thank you for our time in the word this morning, Lord. We thank you for always showing us where to go and what to do, Lord. Always being there, always by our side and watching over us, Lord. We ask that you'll bless our partners and listeners as they go their way, Lord. Give them peace and shalom as they go to school and do their work for their jobs, Lord. We thank you for divine favor. We thank you for divine provision, Lord. We thank you for everything that you have done for us, Lord, and that you're continuing to do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.